Welcome to The Future Past, a counterpoint to our YouTube channel, The Future Fast. Instead of looking at the next big thing or what's coming next, here we explain how the next big thing was shaped by the past and what that means for the future. In this episode, I want to take you back to the origins of artificial intelligence, AI. Aha, you might say. Everyone knows it was born from a paper written by Alan Turing in 1950 when he conceived the imitation game, which became the Turing test. It in effect says that if a machine can engage in a conversation with a human without being detected as a machine, it has demonstrated human intelligence. You can actually download that paper off the internet. It's called Computer Machinery and Intelligence, and it's a fascinating read even today. It starts with this powerful intent from Turing, where he says, I propose to consider the question, can machines think? This should begin with definitions of the meaning of the terms machine and think. He then goes on to examine how his concept of the imitation game can provide the test of whether machines are thinking. My favorite part of the paper, though, is when he quotes the remarkably named Lady Lovelace, whose formal name was Augusta Ada King, Countess of Lovelace and a legendary English mathematician. She worked with the more legendary Charles Babbage, who built the first working mechanical calculating machine called the Difference Engine, still in museums today. Babbage had an even greater ambition, which was to build a mechanical general purpose computer that he called the Analytical Engine. Lady Lovelace worked with him on the project and was the first to recognize that it had applications beyond just calculation. She created a sequence of instructions, or what we today would call a computer program, for this analytical engine. Babbage never managed to build it, but that program made Lady Lovelace the world's first computer programmer. Aside from a smack in the face for any chauvinist who believes women and tech don't go together, She also earned a place in Alan Turing's seminal paper for her early understanding of the potential of the technology and also its limitations. He quotes from her 1842 memoir in which she wrote, The analytical engine has no pretensions to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform. This implies a debate on whether machines could originate anything at all and is almost a seminal moment in the contemplation of artificial intelligence, almost. For that, we must go back further in our time machine, back to 1726, where our story truly begins. Here, the protagonist meets a professor who has invented a new kind of machine. He said, Perhaps I might wonder to see him employed in a project for improving speculative knowledge by practical and mechanical operations. That should already tell us the author has stepped way outside any fictional boundaries then existing. Now listen to how he describes the professor's invention. Everyone knew how laborious the usual method is of attaining to arts and sciences, whereas, by his contrivance, the most ignorant person, at a reasonable charge, and with a little bodily labor, might write books in philosophy, poetry, politics, laws, mathematics, and theology without the least assistance from genius or study. All you medieval scholars will immediately recognize the style of, yes, the author of a book called Travels into Several Remote Nations of the World by Lemuel Gulliver. The author, of course, was Jonathan Swift, and the novel is now better known as Gulliver's Travels. But you knew that because your analytical engine is able to deliver answers almost precisely as Lady Lovelace had intended. So, in the metropolis of Legado, on a flying island called Balni Barbi, Culliver comes across the first AI computer in history. Swift even provides a diagram of its output, which resembles nothing less than a computer chip. In the story, Culliver tells its inventor that he will try to get him the credit for the idea back in his native land, but warns him that it is a custom among the learned people of Europe, quote, to steal inventions from each other. So no change there. But there is a twist in the tale. 
turns out, according to literary historians, that Swift was not trying to foresee the invention of ChatGPT or Google Bard. In reality, he was merely poking fun at another intellectual. Wikipedia, which is where school kids learned plagiarism before ChatGPT, uses the phrase, quote, a philosopher, theologian, poet, missionary, Christian apologist, unquote, to describe a man by the name of Ramon Lur. He was a Spanish intellectual who invented a system of universal logic which he intended to prove the truth of religious doctrine, but it turned out that it was the first form of computational theory. In effect, he invented algorithms. He was highly controversial in his day, but the significance of his work became fully understood in the 21st century after discovery of some of his original writings. Back in the day, people like Swift found him, shall we say, rather amusing? That is because his work was already 500 years old. We go back to the 13th century now. It's a massive leap to connect Ramon to AI, but he did inspire Swift to imagine a machine that used these principles to do exactly what generative AI does today. That's all cool and fun, but what does it tell us about the future of AI? What, do I look like an analytical engine? No one can predict the future. On the other hand, we can extrapolate from the present and, of course, from the past, which is the purpose of this podcast. So, if our traveling companion Lemuel could foresee ChatGPT, perhaps Lady Lovelace could contemplate machines that have pretensions to originate. Ramon felt you could prove anything with the use of algorithms. Turing imagined machines that were indistinguishable from humans. Now let's combine Gulliver, Lovelace, Ramon and Turing, all arguing with themselves and with each other, and what do we get? Not only the large language models that underpin generative AI, but also large fact models that actually produce accurate information, that's a hope for the future, large proof models that solve the mysteries of science and mathematics and large people models that can precisely imitate, well, anyone. That is the imitation game coming to a computer, smartphone, hologram, or mixed reality near you sooner than you think.